Yo. How's it going? What's up, guys? How's it going? Just gonna film you. Shoot Rob. Hello. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Hey, right. man. Hey. I'm Dan. Brendan. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, man. Hey. I'm Zach. How you doing? Nice to meet you, Brendan. sir. Pleasure. Pleasure. Nice Hi. Hi, AJ. Hi, AJ. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hey, man. Zach. Zach. Nice to meet you. You're gonna Sweet. be uh, right here. Right here. Yeah, man. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, dude. Of course. Zach, say the gang. <laughs> Brendan Yuri in the studio. Hello, sir. What's up? Yo. How you doing? Life for you is <laughs> awesome, is it not? It's crazy. It's really crazy. I mean, like, let's just soak this in right now. Yeah. Panic at the Disco has been around for quite some time. Yeah. You guys have been riding this incredible wave. You have been on such an amazing journey. Yeah. And one could really argue that, like. Your day is coming now. Like <laughs> what we just experienced in January oh, was yeah. such a peak for your career. I mean, you had the Crazy. best album sales that you've ever had. Number one, beating out David Bowie and Adele on the Billboard 200. R.I.P. That, that's crazy. That's really crazy. Did you think Death of a Bachelor was going to do this for you? Ne no, no. Just first off, no. Like you never know what you know your album's going to do. You yeah. Know, people telling you like, oh yeah, this could be good. This could be a good idea, but. As long as I was doing, I've always done what I wanted to do, so it's just I never think about it until album's about to come out. And then once it, it's released, then I'm just like, all right, I take a sigh of relief, just like, yeah. ah, breath of fresh air. It's great to have it out finally. I mean, it's crazy. This album, obviously different from the others, because yeah. now you are the sole remaining member of Panic at the Disco. Right. You are Panic at the Disco. Yeah, I'm the last dude. Yeah. I, <laughs> different creative process. What, like, oh, yeah. what, like, how did it differ from the albums in the past? Oh, man. Well, it's got to be different automatically just from going from, you know, four guys in the studio. Yeah. Like, y there's so much compromise and there's so many different ideas. So, like, where I would be specific about this thing, I would care about melody, I wouldn't care about lyrics. But now I got to care about all of it because I'm doing it all. It's all so you. It's great. But it's great, though. It's like it's really nice to have that different dynamic change for myself where yes. I can, you know, keeps the process moving, where I can jump from drums or do a lyric or do, you know. Cool. Any pressure? I mean, you've achieved such yeah. incredible success, right? Yeah. And like, is there any part of you that's like, you know what? <sighs> I, I have all of this under my belt, right? I have really killed the game. Yeah. I've made such a name for myself. I've I've paved such a path for this genre of music. <laughs> it's like Jenga, dude. One false move, it could all come crumbling down. Exactly. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. Uh, I never think about the pressure though. It's weird because, we, like, I guess it comes. It's probably stems from the first album, like yeah. just starting off that way where. We didn't really know. As a band, had no idea what it would do. And then it took off. We were like, wow, okay. So we kind of have to just pick up the slack. Started coming up with how do we do a tour? We've only got 35 minutes of music. How do we wow. fill up an hour and a half of live show? So it was like all these things we had to keep tackling one at a time. But that's that's usually what helps, um, tackling it one at a time. But I never, I don't know, like I never had the, I never had like label pressure or management pressure. Like I, I got very fortunate. Wow. In the whole game. <laughs> yeah. So wait, throughout your journey, you had no like management pressure, none of that kind of stuff? No. So what's crazy is that, you know, from the get go, dude, it was like uh, first album. They, we did. We, so we, we had a uh, $10,000 to do the first album. We had like no money. <laughs> and like, you know, now albums are being made for like a million dollars. Yeah. So like, it's crazy. What were you so doing $10,000 <laughs> today? <laughs> By the chair your yeah. ass is going to sit in exactly. in the studio? Yeah, like 10 grand. That's my <laughs> mouse for my computer, bro. That's my special gold plated mouse. So like there's, I don't know, there's like, uh, there's a little give and take. But at that point, we couldn't even get an extra $200 to pay someone to come in and play trumpet. We had to pay a six, sixth grader to come in and play trumpet. And we recorded each note separately. So if you listen to I Write Sins, Not Tragedies. Yeah. Yes. First single off first album. We recorded a, a girl who was like, you know, 13, 14 years old, playing cello one note at a time. And we just took them and we like sampled them basically and played it on like an MPC. Like, bum, 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 bum. So we actually wow. did that like by hand. It was really crazy. So from, you know, having all that stuff happen, it was just kind of natural to like never question it and like not worry about. I don't know, man. I'm very lucky. <laughs> you were because you were, they gave you rocks and sticks and you made a real fire. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. And from that moment, they were like, we trust you. You're good to go. Mm -hmm. You know what you're doing here with 10 yeah. grand. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I don't know if they trust me or they're just like, we don't even know. Like, I don't think anybody gets it. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't think they understand it. I'm just like, eh, let's see what happens. It's panic. Who knows? When you listen to <laughs> Sins, Not Tragedies, and then you listen yeah. to Victorious, right? I mean, we're, we're talking two different sounds. Yeah. Two different eras, two different types of panic at the disco. Yeah. What do you think when you hear that first single, which, by the way, yeah. paved the way for the genre selling 1.8 million, man, That's back then. That's crazy. That, it's, it's really crazy. Like, for me, I, I mean, I panic. I have panic tour a lot. So, like, we're still yeah. a very much a touring band. And so the live thing is a really big uh, interest for me where 
that's when it the old songs take on new meaning. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm singing old stuff that's 11 years old in my brain, 12 years old, some of wow. the songs, just having them be a part of me. And just hearing kids sing it back to me just completely changes it, makes it so much better. Where does your head go when you're on stage and you perform Sins Not Tragedies? Like, what do you think of? Are oh, you transported man. somewhere? Is it all? It must be yeah. different every time. Yeah, that's that's. It's usually like toward the end of the set. So yeah. if I don't close out the set with it, it's you know somewhere toward the end. So it's usually at a moment where my adrenaline's been been fueled so much during yeah. that set that I I just kind of lose myself. I forget where I'm at, what I'm doing. It'll come in in moments, and then I'll <laughs> I'll get hyper aware, and I'll just be like, oh no 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 no. Then I like have to turn my brain off and just be like, just live in the moment. Because it gets really crazy sometimes. It's awesome. Wow. I love it. How often are you touring? Like, how, how many, do you know how many weeks out of a year? Because, like, you guys do tour often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's about 38 weeks out of a year. Wow. Like, nine months out of the year, I'm usually gone. Okay. But it's not at nine months at a time. Is that it, sounds crazy. Is it amazing and still surreal knowing that you can fill a venue off of, I mean, like. Th- it's crazy. Like, it's, it's insane. Like, as I was, like, just recapping the history, because I remember the first time I watched one of your music videos. Oh, yeah. I was in my friend Lauren Chef's bedroom, and yeah. she was like, you need to check out Panic at the Disco. <laughs> and I was like, what? what? Tell me. And I'm, I think I was in, like, the third or fourth grade. Like, I just, I, I remember, and I was, I remember watching it be like, what is going on right now? <laughs> and I had That's zero awesome. idea and I got so into it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, there's nostalgia here. There's history. Yeah. There's, it's almost legendary for 90s kids. I mean, Dan it has like a, a thousand stories where he's connected to your music. Dude, you're the reason I bought a hair straightener. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm so sorry. No, that's amazing. I mean, I, I mean, I tried the eyeliner here and there, but it just wasn't working for nah, me. Like nah, it wasn't nah. working for you. But that's like, going out makeup. That's like you know, you do eyeliner when you're going out. I mean, yeah, I gave it, I gave it a try, but I couldn't pull that one off. <laughs> yeah, I was confused that's as awesome, a child. Man. You went to go try it. <laughs> Wait, no, no. After I write sins, not tragedies came out. Listen, look, I, I went to a school dance. Wait, stop it. And are you about to pull up some pictures right now? Dude. I tried to pull that one. I tried to pull that off from the music video. Now this is I look at this picture and this is just <laughs> class. There is hundred percent class in this I, picture. This is a gentleman. You know what I'm saying? This, is a, this is a man about town. A gentleman and a scholar. He's got, like you, I'm, I'm guessing you have like spats on your shoes that cover it. I don't remember <laughs> you know what was what down I mean? there. I mean, it was bad. But I mean, you had the straightened hair. You had that maroon red his jacket Dude, on. I was like, you know I, what? Could, I, could, I could be him. <laughs> yeah, those are very panic colors, man. Exactly. That's solid. Yeah, yeah, we look very similar actually right there. I had a pretty close uh, outfit pretty close yeah. to that. Dude, that's amazing. <laughs> you know what's so funny too about the like straightening iron and stuff? I, I got that. Dude, I don't need that. Like my hair, no, no, I'm straight. like Pan-Asian, bro. Like that's my heritage. <laughs> so I don't know why I was getting this like... <laughs> <laughs> my mom's all speaking like some Hawaiian pigeon. Why you make your hair straight? It's already straight, bro. Yeah, all right. I mean, your your history is really interesting. You're of Hawaiian descent, but you grew up in Utah, Mormon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how? Well, yeah. How man. was that? I mean, so like you know, I, I was born in Utah. I was born in St. George, Utah. I lived there for two years. I don't remember any of it. I okay. was just a baby. So. By the time my p- family picked up and, and moved to Vegas, I had no recollection. So Vegas is really my home. I mean, that's where, you know, I was raised. I grew up just uh, sneaking out, going to, you know, house parties in the strip and seeing what I could Hell get into. Yeah. It was the best, man. But I don't know. It's very strange, like coming from that world, uh, especially my, my family's religious. Like, yeah. you know, Vegas has a huge Mormon community. Uh, and I mean, massive. you look at like uh, the two other bands from Vegas and both singers are Mormon yeah. kids. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Like that shows you how massive it is. So it was cool. Like it was a good community, but man, I just wanted to get out. I think every kid just wants to get out of their hometown. But it know? was while you're in high school in Vegas where Panic really formed, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. What, what did your parents think like when you first pitched them on this concept and said, hey, mom and dad, I'm going to do this band. This is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm wearing. Oh, dude, the clothing alone was like I had to sneak it. I would change in my van. This is real, actually. So I would wear like certain clothes out the door and then I would have a change of clothes like into my girl jeans. You know what I mean? Like I would have like a tight s- shirt from Savers, like some thrift shop I stuff. You know what I mean? And then I just throw on my little <laughs> slip on vans and my, oh my God, my like flared out girl jeans. And it was amazing. Amazing, dude. But yeah, my parents, like at the time they just thought, oh, this is just a fun thing. Like music's yeah. always been big in my family. They love music. We celebrate, you know, using music with everything. So the music part wasn't crazy. But when I told them, yeah, this fun little hobby is going to become a career now. Yeah. We're going to try to pursue this and try to tour. They were just like, what? You're going to starve. You're not doing college. What's wrong with you? You got to find an apartment. Get out. Like, it's just crazy. So, uh, you know, that lasted like a month. And then they were like, all right, cool. You guys are fun. This is real now. <laughs> they're, like, yeah, they're like, yeah, this isn't some gimmick. You guys are actually into this. Do this you remember cool. the reaction to your first show? Like, what was the first show you asked them to come to? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> so my parents. <laughs> so like at this time, right? Like, uh, I don't even know if they like knew how 
how much of a potty mouth I had, right? So like all that stuff was hidden away. They had no clue who I really was. Girl and jeans so, and potty uh, mouth. Girl jeans, it swear words. It's on, parents. Like it's crazy. So when they came to the first show, we played this place called called the Alley. It was okay. in the back of this uh, place called Family Music, right? It fit maybe like 300 people, and they came out, and uh, a couple of our songs, you know, a little risque, talking about <laughs> a little crazy <laughs> stuff, and a couple F-bombs here, some swears. So when they heard that, I was expecting this, you know, blowback of just, we're a little disappointed in the lyric usage, but uh, we still love you, and <laughs> just that horrible guilt that your parents give you. But they were stoked, man. They were like, that was incredible. You guys are so great. Wow. It was the coolest turnaround, man. I mean, crazy. that must have felt amazing. Oh, it was incredible. Yeah, I was walking on air, man. It's crazy. No better validation there. No, 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 man. To have my parents come full force and just a full 180, like, we love this. You know, you're doing what you love and what you need to do. How crazy is your journey? Like, how often are you looking back? I mean, you've had so many great life moments. I mean, 2013, you get married. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Obviously, you know, uh, Death of a Bachelor out in January. Yeah. Moments to look back. I, have have you have you looked back at the journey and the life you lived? Oh yeah, all the time. You know, when it usually happens is when I'm hanging out with friends or we go out yeah. to a bar and like uh, we'll be like, "Hey man, remember that time?" <laughs> and it's usually some crazy, like it's really crazy. Some of the stuff is really funny. Like uh, for instance, one time we were like, "Hey man, remember that time at Genting Mountain in Malaysia where I like surfed you down a water slide?" Jesus, like <laughs> what? Man, remember that time you like drank a whole bottle of SoCo and we tried to like pee off this hotel and then like a guy came up and opened our door and like tried to push us off the no it was crazy yeah. <laughs> it was like crazy stuff like it'll happen in spurts like it, there's so much crazy stuff that happened in the last decade it was just like a rush to the head you know so even looking back now it's like I'm trying to get my facts straight I don't even know if I could I, tell a story <laughs> you're five albums deep here yeah 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 do these albums are they connected? Are they just or are they different versions of you? Do they do they? I feel like they ver they're very much representative of where you were at that stage in your life over the last twelve years. Yeah, or exactly. I agree. I agree with that. Uh, it's totally like for me, each album's like a yearbook. It's yeah, like I can look back. This is where I was. This is who I knew. This is who I hung out with. These are the songs I wrote. This is what I was talking about. Yeah, it's really cool. It's like, uh, you know, I get, get nostalgic about that. You know, when uh, Fever, our first album, turned 10 last year, I wow. spent all of September 27 just listening front and back. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember recording this. Oh, yeah, I remember not having money for that <laughs> trumpet player. <laughs> it's crazy. And now when you're listening to that, are you are you critiquing yourself? Are you are you transported to those moments? Oh, like, man. Do you listen to it and be like, you know what? I wish I could have done this differently. Or, you know, if this was just a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, like, I, it would totally be a different album if I had redone stuff. Yeah. You know? But um, it's, it's better to look back and just like, I used to critique it a lot. When it first came out, I would listen back and just be like, man. I need to learn how to sing. It was just bad, wow. dude. I was like so bummed. Uh, but now I look back and I was like, oh yeah, that's 17, 18 year old me. It's cute. <laughs> it's adorable. It's ado That's the best way to put it. Adorable. <laughs> yeah. Man, Death of a Bachelor, you managed to fit like stadium rock, Sinatra, gospel, hip hop, dance all into one album and you somehow made it work. Like, how'd you pull that one off? I don't even know, man. That's actually, <laughs> <laughs> now that you're saying all this stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. No, it's, it's really cool because uh, I usually go song to song now where it used to be like, oh yeah, I gotta have this album vision, do this whole thing, which I've done a couple of times which works but this time around it was song to song like I wanted to do a Sinatra song and then after that I was done with that I wanted to do a Queen song and then I wanted to jump to Bruce Springsteen and Journey and like all these different you know stuff that I was raised on stuff I grew up on so I was kind of going back to my roots um, and in the same way of going back to my roots it was like I was writing all this stuff and recording everything, so yeah. that's just more fun for me too in the have, studio. Have you had a vision for that type of music, that style of music for a while now? Have you just been waiting for the right time to release it? Oh man, I've been wanting to do, uh, I still haven't done what I've been what I've been wanting to do with like Sinatra stuff. I want to do a jazz album really bad. Crooning. Just like crooning. Yeah, yeah. just full, full croon, full Harry Connick. You the know? last song on the Love new it. album is kind of that. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a more sad kind yeah. of like uh, giving up, this is an impossible year. I like ending the album on like a sad note, because everything else is just like, yeah, let's party, we're the best. <laughs> I was gonna like, say, do you miss your single days? Because I was like, as I was listening to it, and the like, House of Memories, yeah, don't yeah. threaten me with a good time. The golden days, I'm like, this guy doesn't like being married, does he? <laughs> <laughs> no, man, it's the worst. No, no, no. What's crazy is like, you know what's funny? Over time, I thought it was going to die off. I thought like partying is going to be dead once I get married, like once I get a house and like I just want to chill. And like, yeah, you can do that. But now I know exactly how to facilitate the party that I want yeah. because I've done it so much. And I've gone through all the same different parties. Like, it's just like, oh, you know, now I know exactly who I want to invite, what I want to have there, what kind of animals are allowed, what kind of <laughs> <laughs> what kind of liquor top shelf, what kind of, you know, it's just like crazy. So I mean, a lot of your songs are based off of parties, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And it's all about you piecing together the evening and putting it all together. Yes. Many a night. Last party you threw. Oh, God. Um, about uh, two weeks ago. 
How was it? A little birthday party for the, for the lady. It was great, man. Like, uh, I, I do remember up to a point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for Uber. Shout out to Uber. No, it was crazy, man. Like, um, you know, it, I don't know. It wasn't that many people, to be honest. It okay. was like 25 people. Not, not a lot, but we all went to this bar. We reserved this whole, like, private little thing, playing some pool, doing some shots. And I didn't know that there was going to be karaoke. Oh. So if there's going to be karaoke, that's a game changer. Just know straight up, like, if we're going to go out and, and you don't tell me about karaoke and we show up at karaoke, it's going off. Wow. It's going to go crazy. What, do you, what is your go-to? Like, when you karaoke happens, you, you have to have a song that hits first. I usually do Whitney Houston. Uh, it, it, you could do uh, Dance with Somebody. Okay. Or, uh, you know, Somebody Loves Me. It's, uh, I don't know. There's, like, uh, there's, there's different ones you could do. If you want to go, like, a, if it's feeling a little more somber, sad notes, then I go into, like, Frank Sinatra. But oh. it depends. You know what I mean? But I feel like people, like, I know, I have friends who, who are really talented individuals and they're musicians and yeah. we'll sometimes go to karaoke and, like, I'm not going to lie, I'm expecting a level of performance right now. <laughs> like, don't, don't. <laughs> Me on Give this. me a show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, like, you can suck, right? But like, I don't want you to be as crappy as I am. I'm, like, I'm I, like, the bar is set like not crazy high, yeah. but higher than me. That's kind of the fun, though, right? Like, I mean, that's the fun of karaoke. Is like, you can't be too good, though. Yes, you know what I mean, like, you've got to go. It's like. If you're going to go for it, I try to sing stuff that's way out of my range okay. so that it's just hilarious. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so I read a comment online, actually. I wrote it down and said, Brendan Urie's vocal range is bigger than my future. <laughs> <laughs> wow. These kids, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they say crap like that. Your, your range goes higher than my grades or whatever. <laughs> It's like, it's but, crazy. but it's true. I just heard it on one of your vines. You have, oh, yeah. you have quite the range. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, I don't know, man. It's like fake voice. You know what I mean? Like you, over time you figure out like party tricks, you know what I mean? Okay. I yeah. don't know. Like I, I can hit a low note, but that's like a fake voice. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the high stuff I sing like my mom, cause she's a soprano. So she's just like, ah! it's like going way too crazy. So it's like all party tricks. You Are know your mean? parents musical at all? Yeah. Very musical. My dad played guitar in high school, sings really cool. well. They both sing in church choir and stuff. It's kind of where I, you know, started. Uh, and then my mom plays organ and piano for church. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Wow. Do you consider yourself a solo artist now? I mean, I get, yeah. I'm, I'm in both worlds. I'm a band and I'm a solo artist. It's weird. But dude. have you ever considered like dropping panic now that it's just you or is, are you panic? No, I've never considered it because it, it kind of happened gradually over time. It was like, yeah. it wasn't even an overnight thing, which I, I assume... In the public eye, for a lot of people, I'm sure it seems like, oh, it's just overnight. Now, now he's the last dude. Mm -hmm. But it really was like, you know, a couple dudes left here. It was like, all right, still got a couple homies. Like, we'll still make music. It's been like a slow decline over the past slow, few years. It's been a slow little, yeah. And then finally, like, it's gotten to this point. And I never thought, you know, I would say this, but it's it's the best, dude. Like, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Because, you know, I love doing the band thing. Did it for almost a decade. That's great. But now that I'm doing this new thing, I'm all about the new thing. Hell yeah. Newer is better. <laughs> is it crazy to you to think that when you first, I mean, you know, you, you met Brent Wilson, right? In mm -hmm. high school in a guitar class. That's right. It, it, they were looking kind of for a singer, but they already had, they were looking for guitarists. Guitar player, yeah. Because they had a lead singer at the time. Right, kind of. That, that you ended up replacing, I believe, you know, I right. think his name is Ryan or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan ended up ax asking, axing? Asking me. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up asking me, hey, hey, bro. No, nah, and like, he ended up asking asking me if I wanted to be the singer and I at the time I was like yeah I mean I'll do whatever you guys asked me to yeah. do because this isn't you know I joined up with you guys like whatever you want I yes. just wanted to play in a band so I joined as a temporary guitar player just for a couple shows to fill in for their guitar player and then it worked out so well they're like ah we don't need the old guy back and then you can just stick around and sing I mean wh where do you think Ryan is now poor Ryan I <laughs> he's, not, he's hanging I just saw him actually the last I saw him was Halloween wow but I texted him Maybe like a couple months ago. And th there's no like bad vibe. There's nothing like, oh. I could have been you. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I don't think either of us wants to be each other at all. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> is he making music still? I think so. That's cool. I'm pretty sure. I didn't talk uh, in depth about like any any projects he's working on right that's now. That's cool. But, like, we, what's weird too is I guess now like, I guess that's weird that we don't really talk about music because when we hang out or we see each other, it's just like, hey, how you doing? Hey, have you seen that movie? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, great. Cool. Hey, I, see you later, man. I mean, understandably, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like what is he going to be like? So what what have you been up to? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. like, hey, go check out the charts. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like when you break up with somebody and you're just like, so who are you dating now? <laughs> it's like no one. Yeah. <laughs> That's uncomfortable. <laughs> Do you talk to any of the other members at all? Like are you guys in touch? Yeah, yeah. Uh, me and Spence are still really good friends. Cool. I just talked to him actually today. He just texted me. Hell yeah. Yeah. So we hang out all the time. Quite the journey here. Death of a bachelor. I mean, is the bachelor and you dead? <laughs> you know, dude, I don't even know. <laughs> like, listen, I love being married, but 
listen, dude, like Brad Pitt's married. Look at that guy. He's killing it. He's a man about town. George Clooney's married. George Clooney. look, look at him. Look at that dude. I mean, come on. One can only dream to even be George Clooney's toe. John so. Travolta is married, but that, you know, he's into guys and girls. Like, who cares, bro? <laughs> he's all about it. Yeah, but you're into guys and girls too, I heard. Exactly, dude. Yeah? Does it get like, okay, so how does, how does your lady feel about it? Oh no, I mean, I'm not, like it's, it's fun. when people have asked me, I don't, I, the last time I was probably asked about it was like a year ago, I think I did an okay. interview and they asked me if, if I classify myself as straight, bi, whatever, and I was like, you can classify me as, I really don't care. That's awesome. Like, I just don't really care. I don't know if it matters because mm-hmm. I like people. You know what I mean? Hell if a yeah. person's good, I'm into that person. If a dude's hot, dude's hot. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. There's <laughs> some it. good looking dudes out there. <laughs> like, look at Ryan Gosling, bro. I totally make out with his C- face. W- <laughs> would you invite, okay, question. Ryan Gosling happens to appear in the studio. Yeah. Is there an invitation that goes, hey, Ryan, you know, mm-hmm. Wednesday nights, that's the night that Sarah and I, we have a good time. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing around 8.30 tonight, you know? I'll co- pop open some rosé. Yeah, come- sit by the fire. We'll watch some uh, some Netflix and chill, bro. The three of you. <laughs> yeah. Is that a thing? Yeah. I mean, listen, dude, like, I, w- I want to just have discussions. Yeah. I want to have a talk. I don't want to decide this right now. I can't decide on Ryan Gosling's behalf. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm going to get to know you first, and then you get the invite. So... <laughs> what's your favorite smells you know what I mean <laughs> I want to get to know this deal. I want to have a connection you know what I mean Brendan <laughs> Brendan Urie jeez yeah oh I'm not done I gotta I gotta, I gotta ask I you know about, you have a list okay. yeah I do Panic at the Cisco how did that come about you got to perform Dude. the song song with Cisco the, like I can, I'm actually kind of speechless right it was so crazy like we've, <laughs> we've made the, what's, I think it came from a joke that I made with uh, my buddy JD who works at our management I was like yo Panic at the City we were listening the Thong Song came on the radio we were just listening to like you know 90 stuff and that popped on so we were just super stoked and we made the Panic at the Cisco joke cut to you know a month ago Jimmy Kimmel's people hit us up they're like hey we have this really great mashup idea Panic at the Cisco and I said say no more like it doesn't matter in <laughs> what capacity we do this we're doing this because you know we've been wanting to do this something with Cisco for so long and then finally doing the rehearsal was crazy like he shows up and I'm just like holy crap that's Cisco dude like, and his that's hair a legend. was white <laughs> and his hair was white you, he didn't reveal it at all actually he didn't take the hat off or anything he had like a hoodie he had he was like all covered up but he came up was super nice what's going on man and then I was expecting rehearsals to, you know, you kind of like hold back vocally yeah. so you don't blow your voice out and stuff. He came out just, yeah! <laughs> like he was screaming top of his lungs. It was so dope, dude. And like it blew my mind. Coolest guy ever. Nicest guy. It was amazing. Those moments still happen to you where you see another performer, you get a chance to work with someone and you're taken back. Dude, every time. Every, yeah. It's like every other artist, honestly. Like I, I, I freak out. I, I got to do Kennedy Center Honors where I performed in front of the president and I got to meet Billy Joel. That's that unreal. blew my mind. Like that's one of my like all time favorite singers and idols. Yeah. Is well, there like a, a mutual admiration there, an admiration for them, and respect for their craft? Like when you listen to wh- whether it's Billy Joel or listening to the radio today. Yeah. How do you listen? Do you listen oh, as, as for with pure enjoyment, or do you listen as more from a technical side? What is it? What yeah. goes on in your head? I can pick moments. I'm lucky in, in the sense that I can listen to a song and enjoy it. Yeah. And then if I need to get critical, I can. And that sometimes it'll happen where I don't want to get critical or I'm listening to a song, I'm trying to enjoy it. And I'm just like, shut up, self. Like, I want to enjoy this song. Like, stop critiquing the production, bro. Like, it's cool. It's good for you. You didn't do it. You know, shut your mouth. So I got to like have that inner struggle with myself. But it's, uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I just, I love music so yeah. much that it's just, it's hard to be, you know, too critical of anything. Of I course. hate being too analytical and getting inside my own head. Music just makes me feel good, you know? What do you think about pop music today? Oh, I love it. So yeah. far, it's great. Yeah. yeah there's good and bad with everything. Is it cool to see Panic at the Disco make their way back onto CHR? It's been a it's, little bit. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been quite a while. I, it, it's just crazy. Like, you never know what your stuff's going to do. And then when it reaches a, a bigger audience, that's just automatically always what I've wanted. I just oh, yeah. want to reach as many people as possible, play to as many people as possible. I just want to share what I'm doing with with just everybody. And it and it's, it still lives on. And yeah. your fans from day one are still there. Dude, I see people that I've seen for 10 years, 11 years now playing shows. And like, I'll see fresh faces. It gets me excited. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got new people coming to the show. That's great. But then I see, you know, I've got that special connection with fans. You have meet and greet. I'm like, I remember you. Like, I just saw you like last year. How are you? you know? See, that's beautiful. But now we have like inside jokes and we have uh, memories where we can talk about like, that was really great. This was really cool. I don't know. It just makes it more special. It, I was just going to say yeah. very special. Yeah. 
You know, our Snap Queen AJ is very into you. You want she has, she's very you want to come over? <laughs> I love you just said that. She's like, what? And I mean into Bro. you. Yeah, but not not into you like in that way. I mean musically uh. into you. He's very interested regarding uh, when it comes to the music videos. Are you oh, what are you what are you thinking? Oh, you like the videos? What are you doing? What's wrong with you? She's trying to wire. She's wrapped around these headphones. <laughs> okay. Are you good? Are you okay? I'm great. Okay. <laughs> you got a question or two? I do. And actually okay. Dan Dessel asked a lot of them, so now oh, I'm okay. like, what do I ask? <laughs> um I wanted to ask you from like an actor perspective uh -huh. I wanted to ask you about like the theatrical side like what your history was um, if you had any in theater because uh -oh. uh, in your music videos you were oh, just yeah. very like on it oh thanks thank <laughs> you very much that's awesome no so I I actually I was asked that before but I, I'd never taken um, I had never taken drama class or theater in school I wanted to really bad but uh, I guess I wanted to smoke weed more. So I, I did theater craft. So I built all the sets for the guys. Like the whole time, just like, <laughs> yeah, dude, this archway is going to look awesome. <laughs> and so I was doing all this stuff for all the plays. <laughs> but I could have done that and I should have done that. But, but you know, what saved me is growing up, like we would always make home videos with my family and my family's character. I grew up with uh, four older siblings. So two older brothers, two older sisters. And they would kind of like dress me up as whatever they wanted and make me do stuff. Like just, uh, That's awesome. all right, act like this guy, act like James Lipton, act like, you know, this guy. So we we would just be making home videos and I think that's where a lot of that came from but it, you know it just came from that love of like wanting to act out wanting to just be rambunctious create a villain for yourself to play in a video you know so basically like this is like kind of second nature for you like it's innate to just jump in front of the camera and yeah just be that character I, I, I guess so yeah like I just I, I some it depends like I got to get myself in a mood but then you know once I get you know sit in the mirror and just like you've got this you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> come on buddy you can do this no it's it's really fun to just uh Step outside of your shell and like just be crazy. But that's what you do. you're an actor. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah pursuing. Awesome. Thank you. That's great. Um, singing, musical theater. So I also wanted to ask oh, you about sorry. like, you already answered. Um, you said that when you finished the first album, yeah. you were like, man, I really need to better myself. So like, what did you do? What steps did you take to better your your voice, your like vocal instrument? Because you can do anything. Oh. It's, you can, you're like a chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I appreciate that. Of course. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the vocal thing, like um, I, so before we started touring, I knew that I had to get some kind of lessons. So I did about three months of lessons um, with this guy named Jeff Skousen. Shout out to Jeff. You're awesome. And he hooked me up with a couple lessons where he basically told me like, I can't teach you how to sing. You're just going to sing the way you're going to sing, but I can give you tools to save your voice from blowing out, you know, because you're singing stuff that's out of your range because you guys are writing stuff that's out of your range. That's really stupid. But it, it, this is going to help save that voice where you're not going to break and you're not going to at least it's going to be less times you're going to mess up. Uh, so yeah, it was like lip buzz and stuff like that. You know what I mean? You do the little red all that stuff. Yellow leather. <laughs> Which is, yeah, red leather, yellow leather, yellow leather. How now, brown cow? So it's like all that weird stuff, <laughs> jaw exercises and stuff. Um, but the singing stuff, I think just happens over time. Like I just got, we played so many shows live that I think just over time, you know, singing you so build. much, I just figured out party tricks and I was like, oh, I can pinch my throat and do this fake high note and, you know, wow. to fake certain stuff to save your, to save your voice. And stuff. I mean, what's the, cra like, the you bring up a really good point, right? Once you you do something as much as you've done it, right? You're obviously beyond a professional. They say 10,000 <laughs> hours into something. That's oh, when you that, become oh, a professional. Oh, is that the qualifications? Yeah, I, that's what oh, I hear. Because okay. yeah, yeah. I, I don't consider myself a professional at all. But if that's the qualifications, then, then, you're then consider in. me. Yeah, okay, cool. You're in like 50,000 times over. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> What's the craziest thing you've learned from this entire journey as a whole? Mm. What's the biggest? The craziest? Yeah. Um, I would say that the best advice I ever gotten the uh, best lesson to learn from me was to just show up because I was at a point like you know first couple guys left the band and like uh, having to take over a lot of the duties of writing and all this stuff mm -hmm. um, my buddy Rob Mathis who still does all the string arrangements for my albums and I'll send him a melody and he'll just be like yep he'll scribe it and stuff wow. but he told me he's like you know just show up as long as you show up usually something great's going to happen because you feed off connection and you want to you you know have ambition you want to do all this stuff so as long yeah. as you just show up it's probably probably going to be pretty cool so I, I realized, like, yeah. oh yeah, instead of staying in my house and being a total recluse, it's just probably go. better just go, just go out and like see people, get weird, <laughs> you know what I mean? Get weird with it, because that's just, yeah, makes it fun. Brendan Urie, Death of a Bachelor. Woo! The album's out now, Victorious is a single. <sighs> you feeling good about it? Dude, feeling great. It feels right. Yeah, man, like uh, we have a couple shows coming up, like we got a thing coming up uh, this Sunday, actually, we're doing a, a show downtown, and I'm just really stoked for it. And that's oh, like, I think Heather's going to that. We play, uh, oh yeah, you going? going? Yeah. Sweet, Heather and her, <laughs> that's uh, Heather and her boyfriend are both like. Oh man, yeah, yeah you're like you know, you're yeah. yeah. You're also that's going so on weird. tour with Weezer and Andrew McMahon, dude. I, that's crazy. Can we talk about Weezer for a second? This is it's so crazy because now like I see Rivers out and about. Like I'll just bump wow. into him. We we have the same friends now, producer friends. It's like we I just saw him last week. 
this is a total name. I'm dropping this name so hard right now. Yeah, I know Rivers. So like I hang, I hang out with this dude. I bumped into him just like, hey man, what's going on? We started talking production ideas, which got me more excited for the summer tour. Like wow. where I'm trying to figure out um, some collaborative song to do with him. Kind of, you know, how Queen and David Bowie did Under Pressure. And yeah. like, I want to I figure out something we can do, whether it's we cover one another song or we do a, you know, big... That... Uh, Maybe do a Katy Perry song together. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Is it crazy to think that one you're, I mean, you're cool with Rivers, but also you can bring him an idea like that. <laughs> it's so bizarre. And like he he will actually take it seriously. He'll take it into consideration. Yeah. He's like, like, yeah, that's that sounds like a cool idea. <laughs> he's so soft spoken, dude. It's crazy. It's he's so he's the nicest guy, but just so soft spoken. I'm like, hey, what's going on? And I'm like such an extrovert. I give him like the biggest hug. He's like, oh yeah, that's that's nice. Oh, it's nice to see you. <laughs> it's so great, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, around the room. Anything else? Quickly, have you seen Adam Lambert perform with Queen yet? Because I know you're a big Queen guy. I only, I've only seen videos, and I have the most utmost respect for Adam Lambert as a singer. He's phenomenal, and I, I actually want to see them live really bad in person because I'm sure it's just a game changer. It's got to yeah. be totally different. Because I'm actually more for Adam Lambert doing it than. Uh, what's his name? Paul Rogers from uh, Bad Company was doing it for a while. Yeah. Which I don't know if you guys know that band, but would, it's like. Would that be a gig that you might be interested in? No, do you think you could? Brian fill those May, shoes? my phone number is seven zero two. Dude, I would love to. If I could perform one song with Queen, I could die happy. Man. I mean, you do Bohemian Rhapsody all the time, and it sounds That's, amazing. I would love to do that song with them. Play the piano, do the whole thing. Oh my goodness! I see that. Like I'm now guys, visualizing the entire thing. Pimp this information out to to Queen, please. <laughs> Uh, hey, I think we can like send this out. I'm just oh saying. Oh my goodness, how cra- that would that would blow my mind. I don't even know if I could handle it. Actually, I'm talking about Rivers Cuomo, who, granted, is just a phenomenal dude, one of my idols. But to do something with Queen, I wouldn't be worthy. Yeah, you I, know what I mean. Maybe I hear that guy Ryan might be taking that Queen gig. I, is I that know. what he's doing? I think that's what. Oh, he's that's why he didn't tell me what he's doing <laughs> with yeah. music. He's going to son of a. <laughs> he's a real. He's busy. doing Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Panic at the disco. What? You know? Oh man! Panic at the who? <laughs> Dang, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> Death of the Bachelor is out now. Victorious is a single. Really a pleasure talking with you, man. Pleasure's all mine, guys. Thank you so much, man. Y- you're f-ing awesome, and you guys please, are awesome. Mikasa, Sukasa, man, come ah, out. Muchas gracias. Thank you. <laughs> She's rad. I like her vibe. She just seems and like the most positive person in the world. Positive? And yeah. That's great. Oh, yeah, thanks. A real artist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then after that, I, we, went, we were going to go out. We went out a little bit, saw like Scooter Braun and them, and then I was cool. like, my face hurts. Y'all want to go get pizza and go home?